Hello everyone, in this video we're going to dive into logging in Java and we're going to create a Spring Boot application to demonstrate how we can create a log file number one and what's the different types of logging we can do within Java. So the first thing we want to do to go and get our project set up is to go to Spring Initializer. Now if you already have a Java application or you already have a Spring Boot application running, that's fine. You can just skip this part and pick up when we edit the properties file to create our log file. But for everyone else, go to Google, type in Spring Initializer. Uh, when you go to Spring Initializer, you have some options. You can leave all these as default, so leave it as Maven, keep the language as Java. You might want to change the group name, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we might just change this to login. And we'll change the artifact to YouTube example. So now that we've got that done, and again, this is optional, but one thing that you will have to do is to add one dependency. And that dependency is Spring Web. So once you add Spring Web, then everything should be good. So what we want to go and do now is generate. And when we hit generate, this downloads a zip file. So we now want to go to our so we now want to go to our downloads folder. So I'm at my downloads folder and we can see that we've got this zip file. So we're just gonna unzip this. And now that we've got this file here unzipped, we want to open this file in our IDE. So you might be using IntelliJ, you might be using Eclipse, or maybe you're using some other type of uh, Java IDE. Whatever you're using, just open it up in the IDE. I use IntelliJ, so that's the one I'll be using for this video. So now that I have opened up my project within IntelliJ, I'm just going to expand this and I'm going to just run it the way it is because by default it should run, it should uh, build and compile and run without any warnings. Uh, now it will not necessarily do anything because it is an empty project. So I can see by running this I'm currently having an error and that's why it's always good to try and run it first before you try and do anything else to make sure it's actually working. And this problem uh, probably won't happen to you but this is saying that it's listening on port 8080 and there's a problem because I have another application on my machine using that port. So it's port 8080 by default. Now I could do one of two things. I could go and change this current port. So rather than having the default 8080, I could change this to 8081 or something and it would be fine. But in this example, I'm just going to go and kill my current process that's on port 8080. So to do this, I'm just going to go into the terminal. I'm going to paste in this command and I'm going to put in the port that I want. So you can do this too. If you are having issues, you shouldn't have issues um, if you're if this is kind of one of the first Java applications you're running, but if you have, just do this and uh, it should run now if I go back up here and select to run my application. I should see it starting up. So this here, uh, this red uh, don't worry about this too much. This is just a, a warning, even though it's in red, it kind of it's a bit scary, but it's just a warning. And you can see this spring uh, graphic here, so it's looking good. Uh, so I was trying to use that previous command to kill the process, but when I went to run it again, it seemed like it hadn't uh, killed the process running on 8080. So maybe it was a privilege issue. So. I found this command online and it seems to work. So that's uh, that's the one to use if you do run into it. Now, as, a, as I said, you probably won't have this problem, but if you do, or maybe in the future, if you have a, a problem with a port uh, running uh, on the same one as you want to run your current application on, just, just use that command. Right, so 
Now if we go and hit the run button again, we should not get any errors. So it's all info. Yeah, so that looks good. And it says we've started YouTube uh, example app. Brilliant. So now that we know that everything's good, let's just expand this folder to get a better look at our application. So let's open source main java and logging.youtube examples because this is where we're going to be doing most of our work. So this is the file that starts everything off. So this is where all our stuff will originate from. So we want to probably go and create a brand new folder just for an example. So we might go and create a new folder or as it's called in Java uh, package and we're going to create a simple API so I'm going to call it API logging test so now that we've got our folder or package we can then create a class inside this and again this can be called whatever we want it doesn't really matter for this example I'm just going to call this main API logging test Right, so now that we've got that new class, we want to go and make it, uh, you know, into an actual API that we can call from our web browser. So we want to go and just annotate this. So this is where the spring stuff comes in. So if we say we want this to be a REST controller, and then within this REST controller class, we will actually want a request mapping. So request mapping, yeah, there we go. So now we just need to create a public method. So, and this public method will return a string. And the string is just uh, going to be saying something trivial like, um, you know, this is the logging API or something like that. So we'll say it returns a string and we'll call it uh, log me one uh, API. Okay. So we just put in our brackets now and we'll actually return something. So we can return something. So let's just say our uh, log me one API works. Uh, just change that. Okay, so if we go and test this out we should get a response of our logme one API works when we hit, oh, we have to put in uh, what we're actually gonna hit in our in our web browser. So we just say log one, uh, we just leave it at that. So if we go and compile this and build it again, and once we do this, we'll go to our web browser and we'll put in uh, localhost port 8080 forward slash log 1. So we can see we've got no errors here, so that looks good. So let's go to our web browser now. Okay, so we're in our web browser. Just open up a new tab and put in localhost 8080 forward slash uh, log 1. And once you've put that in, just hit enter. And you should see this being displayed. Our log me 1 API works. So if we go back to IntelliJ, we can edit this now. So before we hit the return, our API works, we can go and log something, right? So we could do something like a, you know, a system dot uh, out print and put something in there and that would be displayed to the console. But there's a more elegant way of doing it and it's using a logger. And quite simply, we can use a logger just by creating an instance of a logger and then deciding what type of log level we want it to be. So if we want it to be uh, an error, if we want it to be a warning or maybe just a trace. So let's see what that looks like. So to start off with, just type in logger and we'll have to import this. So, input, so just hold down alt enter and import class and it's this first one we want. So uh, it's the SLF4J, that's the one that we want. So we're gonna import that, you can see it up here, that's the one you want. Then you can call it whatever, you could call it L, 
or you could just call it logger. And we're going to set that equal to the logger factory for SLF4J. And once we do that, we need to go and tell it what class it's going to be logging for. So if we just say get logger, and now we need to put in this name here. So if we just put in this name, dot class, that should be fine, with a semicolon of course, um, cool. So now we can use this variable, you can see it's grayed out here at the minute, which means that it's, it's never used, um, but we are going to use it now. So we're going to say that we want to create a warning, sure, because warning is the first one there. So we just say this is a warning, right? Uh, so if we recompile this again, so we want to rebuild our Spring Boot project. Now what you'll see is we've got this uh, this info printed out at the minute, so that just tells us all the stuff that uh, is coming up at the information level when we start Spring up, but when we actually hit this endpoint now in in uh, in our web browser, we'll see a warning come up here with the the message, and our message is this is a warning. So if I go back to my browser, I refresh this, and I go back here. Would you look at that? We've got a warning now, and it says exactly where it's coming from, and it says this is a warning, and we could change this. This doesn't have to be a warning. This could be uh, this could be an error. So we'll say this, and we'll say we could say this is an error, or we could just say this is a big problem. So now that we've changed that to say this is a big problem, and it's an error. Again, we need to make sure to recompile this every time and just to make sure that we've got no problems here yet and we'll go here refresh this so when we when we refresh it sends a call to the API and now you can see it pops up with this error message so that's okay I guess um, but maybe we don't want to have everything displayed in our console like this maybe we don't really care too much about having it in a console. Maybe we'd rather have it in a centralized place that we can look through our logs. So that's where we would come up with something like a log file. Um, and to do that, we could just say uh, in our in our parent or in our root, we could just create a new file. I could just say my logs dot log. So we've created this file my logs dot log but there's nothing in it, like none of these logs are in it. So to do that, we need to tell Spring Boot that we have this file, it's called my logs, and we want all of our logs to be put into that file so we can see it uh, at our convenience. So to do that, we need to go to our applications.properties file. And our applications properties file is just under resources. So if you're able to navigate to that file, the dot properties file, and type in logging dot file dot name. So if you go and do that, and then just hit equals, and then you want to put the path of your file that you want to output the logs to. So if you just go and find that log file that we created, if we go to mylogs.log and just we're gonna copy this and we want the absolute path. So we're gonna copy that and we can just paste that in there. And now what'll happen is when we go and rebuild this, it should write all our logs to this my logs.log file. So hopefully all this stuff we see here uh, will be in our my logs file. And you can see, there we go, we can see all this stuff here. And if we go to our 
uh, web browser we refresh this we should see the error coming into our logs and if we go back we yeah there we go we see the error and if I was to go and you know do this a couple of times okay so I've done that a couple of times now and I go back to my log you can see look at we've it's recorded all those errors and it has them here in our log file so I hope you found this video useful thank you for watching and have a good day